Excellent! Intel has finally launched Kaby Lake, aka the seventh generation core processor line, which has CPUs that start with sevens instead of sixes, and a whole new motherboard series, and this CPU right here. This is the Core i7 7700K, the successor to the 6700K, and to familiarize you guys with what's new about it, I thought I'd start off with a quick and simple first five video. So here are the first five things that you need to know about Kaby Lake. Thing one is Skylake similarities. First, you're going to notice a lot of similarities between 6th gen Skylake and 7th gen Kaby Lake. You've still got the same CPU socket for both, LGA1151, and they're still going to be using DDR4 memory. Unlocked 91 watt TDP quad cores are still available in the 7600K without hyperthreading and the 7700K with hyperthreading, and unlocked CPUs still won't come with a stock heatsink fan. It's still manufactured on a 14 nanometer process, and the microarchitecture is also still the same, albeit optimized. More on that when I get to thing number two. And this is still Intel's mainstream product line, meaning that more powerful hardware, including six core and greater CPUs, is available to those who can afford it on Intel's enthusiast platform with Broadwell eCPUs and x99 chipset motherboards with the LGA 2011-3 socket. Similarities between Kaby Lake and Skylake may even creep over into their performance, but for that I encourage you guys to check out my benchmarking video. Uh, you can click the card right up there, and if it's not up right now, it will be up later today. Neither tick nor talk. Intel's TikTok product cycle is officially dead with Kaby Lake, replaced by the less catchy three-phase PAO method. So uh, back in the mid-2000s, when AMD's original FX line of CPUs was kinda kicking Intel's ass, they started TikTok, where every year they'd launch a new CPU line. Tick ears were for process shrinks that made everything on the CPU smaller, effectively, and usually more efficient, and talk ears were for microarchitecture updates. PAO has three parts. P is for process, which replaces tick, A is for architecture, which replaces talk, and O is for optimization, which means no die shrink or new architecture, but optimization of the existing CPU design. They already did this kind of back in 2014 before formalizing it as PAO when the Devil's Canyon line of CPUs launched that were sort of a new line of CPUs but were really just a refresh of Haswell. Haswell was a talk in the cadence based on new 22 nanometer microarchitecture and launched in 2013, making Haswell refresh and optimization in 2014. It was neither a tick nor talk. And then Broadwell was the tick again, a process shrink to 14 nanometer. Uh, but Broadwell is just a little weird because it launched like a few days or a week before Skylake and it wasn't really widely marketed, so that's why it's often overlooked. Skylake launched in August 2015 with new architecture, which would have been a talk. And now KB Lake is an optimization, so maybe next year the whole cycle can begin one more time. New Z270 motherboards. So what is new with KB Lake? There are some new things, starting with the motherboards. 200 series motherboards with the predictably named Z270 chipset being the full featured option that enables unlocked overclocking of your KB Lake k -SKU processor. The chipset now provides four more PCIe 3.0 lanes, up to 24 total for high-speed I.O., including Optane support now, but more on that in Thing 4. Intel Rapid Storage technology can also support up to three M.2 PCIe devices now, with Gen 3 x4 connectivity, so I've already spotted more M.2 slots on these Z270 boards. Most of them have at least two now, which is kind of nice. Beyond that, it's just a whole new line of motherboards, so there's a ton of new designs from the big manufacturers out there. I have uh, MSI, Gigabyte, and ASUS versions on me so far. Even more RGB LEDs than ever, of course, and hopefully this time around someone makes a good mini ITX motherboard that doesn't require end user modifications to look halfway decent. Optane. If you've heard of Intel's new storage technology, you probably know that it's supposed to be super fast and crazy durable while not being a storage tech we're currently familiar with. So it's not NAND, but further details are still murky at best. It's shaping up to be additional system memory that sits between the CPU and system memory and the rest of your storage array, so kind of like a big fast cache for your hard drives or SSDs, but also blurring the line between what storage the operating system can address at any given point in time. And Intel says that KB Lake CPU platforms with the requisite M.2 slot are Optane ready. Wait, is that good news or bad news? Optane products aren't expected until much later in 2017, but if KB Lake is Optane ready, does that mean that other platforms from Intel aren't? Like Skylake and the 100 series of motherboards even? Or the Enthusiast X99 Master Race, god forbid? Now I know implementing a game-changing technology like Optane might leave some platforms behind, and Intel says that the extra four PCIe lanes on the uh, 200 series chipset I.O. 
are specifically there for Optane support. But it's hard to see Skylake being left behind if all it's really needed is a PCIe M.2 slot and enough bandwidth, or especially a Broadwell eCPU that has at least 28 PCIe lanes available at minimum. We need more info on this to be sure, but given that Intel is already working with Microsoft and Netflix on another initiative to lock you out of 4K Ultra HD content, unless you have a seventh gen CPU, Windows 10, and the Edge browser, I mean, just look at this helpful chart they made showing the things that you actually do physically need to stream 4K, such as a 4K panel and enough bandwidth and source material, and the extra things that they apparently get to force upon you and force you to use as well. Yay, Microsoft! Who doesn't need another reason to use Edge? And surely Skylake processors don't have enough horsepower to push a 4K signal or decode an HEVC... Uh, anyway, Skylake processors have an HEVC decoder in them. AMD better have a good response to this 4K nonsense. But anyway, my point is, I wouldn't be surprised, knowing that, that Intel might also want to force you to buy new stuff if you want to use Optane as well. Lesai. There is an unlocked dual core. Patience is required though. The 7350K is Thing 5, and I felt it needed some airtime since it is decidedly different from the typical 7600K and 7700K SKUs that we're pretty familiar with. The 7350K is an unlocked KB Lake dual core CPU with hyper threading, so two cores and four threads and a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz. It's a bit of a throwback to the G3258 anniversary edition of the CPU, the dual core without hyper threading that uh, they did on the Haswell line. Uh, the 7350K has a four megabyte cache, 60 watt TDP, and it should be a nice option for budget builders who want to overclock but don't want to spend well over $200 for their CPU. 1,000 unit pricing for the 7700K is $339 per CPU, and the 7600K is $242 per CPU. That's from Intel, just FYI. Unfortunately, the current bulk pricing for the 7350K is listed at $168 US dollars per 1,000 units, so it's not nearly as awesomely priced as the anniversary edition was, which was less than 100 bucks. You'll have to wait a bit longer to check out the 7350K though, Intel has about 40 7th gen products that they're launching this week, but the 7350K won't be up for sale until the end of January or possibly early February. And that's all five things. There's still a lot more to talk about with KB Lake though, such as how does it perform? And how does it overclock? I have a performance testing video with the 7600K and 7700K that will be posted in just a few hours and of course linked if it's posted already. I also have a motherboard video with JJ from ASUS that will be up later today. We go over a ton of the new ASUS boards. And CES coverage is coming at you all this week. So there are many, many exciting things to kick off 2017 just now. If you have any thoughts on this launch though, please let me know down in the comment section below. You can also help me out greatly by hitting that like button uh, but only if you actually enjoyed the video, of course. Share this video too if you know anyone who might like it. Check out my store and get some gear. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.